Marcus Conti reporting down here at the New York Harbor. Talk about a few things today. You saw Syria. Ooh, Trump pulls out of Syria, stops the war. Wow. Ah, liberals are going crazy. They're saying, oh, shit. What did Trump do? He's an idiot. Right? He ended the war. We're going to talk about that. Uh, stock market turned south. All the indexes are breaking down. I want to talk about that, what it means. And uh, are people finally waking up? Right? Are they waking up? I don't know. I don't know, but I want to read, uh, I want to do a reading from uh, Keep the Aphidistra. Keep the a- Astra di- Astra Astra di- Dystra flying. Keep the Aphidistra flying. I'll stumble with that word a couple of more times. But it's from George Orwell. It's a book that uh, preceded, uh, preceded 1984 by 13 years. And it was actually nine years before he wrote Animal Farm. So George Orwell wrote this book about a plant that sits in the window in England. It's a little more than that, but check this out. What he realized, and more clearly as time went on, was that money worship had been elevated to a religion. Perhaps it is the only real religion, the only felt religion left to us. Money is, is what God used to be. Good and evil have no meaning any longer except failure and success. Hence the profoundly significant phrase, to make good. The Decalogue has been reduced to two commandments, one for the employers, the elected, the money priests, as it it were. Thou shalt make money. The other for the employed, the slaves, the underlings. Thou shalt not lose thy job. For after all, what is there behind except, what is there behind except money? Money for the right kind of education, money for, to influence friends, money for leisure and peace of mind, money for trips, money to write books, money to sell them. Give me not righteousness, O Lord, give me money, only money. He wandered about people, he wondered about people in the houses like those. They would be, for example, small clerks, shop assistants commercial travelers, insurance touts, tram conductors. Did they know that they were only puppets dancing when money pulled the strings? You bet they didn't. And if they did, what did they care? They were too busy being born, being married, begetting, working, dying. It might not be a bad thing, if you could imagine it, To feel yourself one of them, one of the ruck of men. Our civilization is founded on greed and fear. But in the lives of common men, the greed and fear are mysteriously transmuted into something nobler. The lower middle class people in there behind the lace curtains with their children and their scraps of furniture and aphidistra plants, they live by the money code. Sure enough, and yet they contrive to keep their decency. The money code, as they interpret it, was not merely cynical and hoggish. They had their standards, their invaluable points of honor. They kept themselves respectable. They kept the aphidistra flying. Besides, they were alive. They were bound they were bound up in the bundle of life. They begot children, which is what the saints and soul servers never by any chance did. The aphidistra is the tree of life. He thought suddenly. That's some powerful shit, right? Now you say to yourself, how does a guy have such profound Um, insight, right? So let's talk about current events. I'm going to go this way today. 
Marcus Conti reporting. I love Orwell, man. I just, I love that. I love that reading. Right? It doesn't even need my summary. I don't need to tell you what it means. It's self-explanatory, right? Greed, money, right? So what does it have to do with current events? <laughs> everything and everything. Uh, so Trump has declared in his own words, we have defeated ISIS in Syria. My only reason for being there during the Trump presidency. End of quote. Right? We're out. Right? Now, is he true to his word? Did he do what he, what he said he was going to do? Damn right. When was the last time the media talked about ISIS? <laughs> right? Why? Because ISIS was a figment of, was a creation. It was, it was, a, it was wrongful acts of war. It was funding, it was funding radical groups and placing them into, into action, right? It was bad policy. Obama, whoever, the corporations behind it to keep a war going, right? But the most revealing tell in the whole thing, you think that people would be happy. It's a big deal, right? Trump stopped an, an insurgency war, at least our participation in the war. Whether Trump has stopped the war in Syria, the civil part of it, is not our problem or not our concern really but has it stopped the american war machine for at least a moment yeah and trump should be should be praised for his action for doing that no doubt right we like that we don't want war insurgency wars f for what all that money spent on wars what do we get now here's the big tell CNN, Wall Street Journal, Lindsey Graham, Nancy Pelosi, the BBC, right? All said that Trump is conceding influence to Iran and Russia by doing it. Right? Think about that for a second. The purpose of the thing was to, was, I thought it was to, to stop ISIS. To stop radical Islam from spreading and killing people. Wasn't that the point? And now that has been eradicated, now it's about influence. See, that's the big corporate tell right there. All the media is gonna to try to spin it that Trump is weak. But, the, the, but the, the purpose of it was never influence. And Trump has always said, I don't wanna fight anybody else's war. Right? So Trump gets, you know, four stars, five stars. However many stars you want to give Trump for, for this action, right? Right. I, I mean, like I said, I you, I bash Trump when he's wrong on financial policy, but in in this move, he's brilliant, totally brilliant. Want to see the bridge? Ah, my bridge. It's a bridge break. Verrazano Narrows Bridge. People always ask, what bridge is that? You're in the New York Harbor where the British. The British stormed the, stormed the beaches of Manhattan in 1776. They hid out in Staten Island. This is the opening of the New York Harbor out into the Atlantic Ocean. Ah, just going the other way today. <laughs> so, Trump the genius, the war, <laughs> the war pig, right? The opposite of the war pig. Right? He's, he's pulling out. Good move, fucking Trump. We love it, right? But how does it affect the market? See how it's connected? Watch. I'll, I'll show you. That's why I put those three in order. So, so Trump pulls out of... Trump is going to pull out of Syria 30 days, right? We're out. And the, and the insurgency war, right? So how does it affect the market? Because, because of the military-industrial complex, right? Boeing's not going to be able to sell bombs and weapons. And I'll also say about Syria, because I don't really understand what influence they're fighting over. And it's probably about natural resources and oil and gas, whatever. But it doesn't matter. The point is that we have no business being in someone else's country. Right? Trying to influence them. Right? 
Đấy I think that guy agrees too So 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 let's talk about the stock market Ah, stock market Fucking love the stock market right? So The S&P The NASDAQ And the Dow All broke support right? What does that mean? What does support mean? You mean like like support, support the poor or support what? No, support is the the lowest, uh, the lowest level that a market will sustain without crashing. It's a dip, but when it breaks that dip, it's dippy, <laughs> right? It, it usually it usually keeps going, and that becomes the resistance, right? It's resistance support. So. The low number then becomes the high that it needs to break. But right now you're in what looks like a kind of a free fall. Day after day, slowly, receding. And that tends to, as it, as it falls, it tends to escalate. It, send, it tends to accelerate. Are we having an influence? <laughs> I think so. Huh? I don't know, it was two and a half weeks ago I said the market might crash. And then I and honestly I said I don't think so based on the chart. But now it's confirmed it's it's a confirmed reversal. I'm no technical analyst expert, but I'm I'm pretty damn close to knowing what I'm talking about. And uh, so we can we can safely say that the markets are in a reversal pattern. Now they can go flat for years. It doesn't mean a crash. It could go this way even volatilely for years. And then and 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 tilt down, right? That's a sideways market. That sucks. It's stagnation. We don't we don't want that. I mean, the market doesn't want that. We don't care anymore because it doesn't have anything to do with the real economy, right? Or it could it could dip drastically. I say it'll dip drastically because of what we're going to talk about next, right? Because again, the the military industrial complex is nervous now because. Trump is pulling out of counterinsurgency wars and saying we don't want to influence, we want to keep our people safe. That was the point in Iraq and, and in Afghanistan. It wasn't to, to gain influence. Or was it? It's very revealing, isn't it? It's not to gain influence, but it's to... It's supposed to be to keep us safe. Right? And now the markets are affected by it. Why? Because it's connected to the war machine, right? The credit machine. The, 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 that $700 billion that, that con Congress gave the military to keep the war machine going. Military spending. They got That shit is burning a hole in their pocket. They got to spend that shit. How are they going to spend it? Trump says, go to Mars, spend it. Right? So now that money, why, why, don't they, why don't they reduce the military spending? Why don't they give universal single-payer health care for all? We won. We won the war. Now stop spending the money recklessly and give it back to the people. Reduce military spending by 80%, Marx Conti. Yeah. So, so the people have the power. Right, this is the final, final point. On this lovely day in New York. The war is over. Ah, peace signs. Where's all the liberals? They should be out with the pink pussy hats. Peace. Right? Shouldn't they? Right? And why not? Why not? Isn't it peace and love? We ended the counterinsurgency war. Where's the peace lovers? No, they don't give a fuck about peace. Right? They're so brainwashed to think that Russia did it. Russia! Fucking Russia! <laughs> They're so gaslighted they think fucking Russia's a... Right? The liberals, you see what the liberal and the conservative and the, the left and the right, the socialist, the communist, the, 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 the capitalist, the monolist, the who fuckingist, the istist. None of these things exist anymore. They're all breaking down. Right? You got, you got the liberal left touting war 
What? What? Passive resistance. Satya Graha. Or simple yellow vest. See, the people hold the answer to this mystery, right? Change happens from the bottom down, from the bottom up, not the top down. Never, never, never from the top down. Now, Trump, again, I've never said that Trump should be removed or overlooked. I just said that Trump will, will follow the lead of the people. And in his heart of hearts, he doesn't believe in, in wars in other people's country, and he believes in America first. And that's a good man to have at the helm, right? But financially, he, he's refusing to, to break from the oligarchy. And that's very problematic. However, the people still hold the answer to that. Simple yellow vest. Can the people have an influence? The people are the influence. Not in their vote, but in their lack of participation. Right? It's now time. Sandbag it. Right? Stay at home. Slow it down. Boycott. Right? See, if, if people default on loans, refuse to pay. Just straight out refuse to pay. Credit cards. Taxes. Mortgages. Right? The, 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 the system comes to a screeching halt. Remove your cash from the, from the bank. 5%, that's all it takes. Banks freeze. Right? If people start to engage the, the crash, the markets inevitably fold. Who's doing it? They're doing it? No, you're doing it. You're doing it. Now, again, I know people, oh, my 401k plan. That's short-sighted because all of that seed money hits the, hits the economy and universal single-payer health care is a no-brainer. College tuition at city and state universities becomes free. We move towards wind and solar. There's so many, so many ways to... You, you're not locked into some stupid job that you can't leave because of health care. You're not worshiping the almighty job, right? So I know it's, it's, again, it's what Orwell was talking about, the worship of money and the, the getting set in patterns, right? But the fact is that's, very, that's the short-sightedness that people need to break out of right here, right now. Right? It's time. It's time, right? Our time has come. If people can continue to, to realize that they're in the driver's seat, stop calling each other names. Stop calling each other names. It doesn't matter. Bring the oligarchy to its knees. Right? And then they'll see like, see the whole thing is, the whole bubble is debt. I'll just leave it off on this because this, this, this single-handedly holds, uh, holds the answer. The bubble, the bubble in 2017, uh, 2007 and 8, was a real estate bubble. Right? Banks were leveraged 40 to 1. <laughs> right? And, and the, the market, that market was controlled and it kept ticking up, ticking up, ticking up. Right? And what happened was, it was fake, right? It was a, it was it was a, it, it was a synthetically held up market, and when it collapsed, it caused a ripple effect across the globe, because not only was was not only was it based on the housing, was the housing market supporting certain mortgages, but it was also supporting these things called credit default swaps, which companies like Goldman Sachs sold to everybody. They sold to J.P. Morgan. They sold to AIG. And it, it put them in billions and billions of dollars in debt, right? And once they were bailed out of debt by the taxpayer, they just went on to, to, to make even more money and steal more and more and more. The socialism kind of thing that happened for them, where the government opened its wallet and let them do whatever they want. The criminals are now running the show and still running the show, right? But what you have now is 
is a debt market. See, everything is piled on top of debt. Debt that you will pay to the day you die is the, is, the, is the essence of what they're calling growth. It's the driving force. Debt, student loans, debt in mortgage, debt in tax, debt, right? Debt to the banks, credit. That's the bubble that's going to pop. And you can make it pop. Right? So the real bubble and the real plunge in the market is when people wake up to that fact that that we control the power the, the levers of power, right? See, once we default the banks, the banks will then cry to to nations like for example what 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 Goldman Sachs did to Greece. They they literally bankrupt the country and said, give us our fucking money right now. And Germany and the, the EU bailed them out. But because they, they succumb to the bankers. Corp, you, entire nations succumbing to bankers. Right? So it's a, it's a, what, what we're seeing is a credit, the, the debt bubble about to pop. Right? And it's expressed in simple yellow vest. We will not take it anymore. We are fucking done. Right? It's a great time to be alive. Right? We're having an influence. Marcus Conti reporting.